Hello, my name is Michael Rice. Today we're going to talk about machine shop safety. How this video is going to work is we're going to start with machine shop safety as a whole for both types of machines, and then we're going to break it down and we're going to talk about specific machines like the lathe or the mill. The first thing I want to talk about in my video is state of mind. If you're not totally engaged in what you're doing, it can create a major safety hazard. You're going to be working around some rotating equipment like this chuck here, and it could be spinning at roughly 300 to 400 RPMs or even higher. You're also going to be working next to this mill where there's going to be rotating end mills that could be quite hazardous. So if you're not totally engaged, you should not be in this area working. Also, if you're working around others, you want to make sure that you're not creating a hazard of distraction or causing some sort of horseplay or messing around, okay? The second thing I want to talk about is the PPE you need to wear in the machine shop. The PPE that you're going to be required to wear is your safety glasses, you're going to need to wear long pants, and closed toed shoes. Whatever shirt you're wearing is, is more than fine, but make sure that if it's long sleeve, that you roll those sleeves back up to be at least above your elbow. And also, never wear gloves when working around rotation equipment. We don't want it to grab those gloves and pull you in. Okay. Number three on our list of things not to do are just bad habits. Some of these bad habits include putting tripping hazards out. This could be anything like electrical cords, air hoses, um, extra parts, cut off, extra cut off bits laying around. Um, other things that we see a lot of is people bring chairs over here and they want to sit down while they're working. This is a work environment. We don't, if we had to quickly turn a machine off or something like that, the chair could be in our way. So we don't want to bring any chairs over. There also, we, we do have a vacuum that we could be using. We want to make sure that after we're done cleaning up the chips and stuff, that we roll that vacuum up, take it back and put it away in its designated spot. La the last bad habit that we often see is people leaving the part running on an automatic setup and they're walking away. These are, these are not automatic machines. They have to have somebody working in front of them constantly. They need to be here the whole time, okay? Okay, so the fifth thing we want to talk about today is no cell phone use. Now when I say no cell phone use, I mainly mean that to no personal cell phone use. I don't want to see you out here texting your girlfriend or Snapchatting your buddies. I want to make sure that you're engaged in what you're doing. So I don't mind if you are working, maybe you get a personal call from your, you know, your parents or something like that and you need to go take it. Go ahead and shut the machine down, make sure that there's no hazards that another student could come in contact with, and then leave the work area. Well, also, we don't want to have anybody using headphones or hearing protection in this area. I know it can get loud, but we try to keep the hearing protection off in this section because when you're working with part, the part will be making some low levels of noise. If those noises rise, you need to be aware of it to slow down the cut or maybe slow down the speed of it. Okay, the sixth thing we want to talk about is house cleaning. First thing we want to do when we're going to do our house cleaning is put away all the tools first. When I say put away all the tools, I don't mean I want them stacked on top of the toolbox or up on the headstock or on top of the mill over here. I mean away in a drawer or back in a, on a tool board somewhere or in an instructor's office. Next thing we want to make sure we do is we're going to clean up all of the flat spaces with all of the chips on them. We want to make sure that we're vacuuming them up, sweep them up, whatever it takes. We want to leave the area in a better condition than when we came here. Okay, next we're going to talk about lathe specific safety things, okay? First we're going to start with the chuck. A few of the safety things we're going to do with the chuck is we're never going to leave the chuck key in the chuck. If you have to move something around, you should always pull this out, set it to the side. If you turn this machine on with that chuck key right here, it'll fly across the room at a quite intense speed and could possibly injure somebody or break a window. Another thing we're going to make sure we do is when we're in operation mode, we're going to have the guard down here. We're just going to have it in place. It should be no big deal. You should be able to see all of your parts and be able to move the tools very close.
The second thing I want to talk to you guys about is tool tightness and part tightness. What everything with a lathe works off rigidity. So we want to make sure that all of our tools and parts are nice and tight. That way they don't vibrate, break the tools and cause things to fly out at you. So the main things we want to make sure we're checking are on the tool, there's three different areas. The first one is there's some bolts here that hold the actual carbide insert in place. Secondly, there's the, a quick change bolt that tightens it down. We're going to use this wrench to tighten, tighten it. Thirdly, you have the actual quick change lever. You want to make sure that you pull this one nice and tight, make sure every part is snug. Now, moving on to part tightness, when you're working with this chuck, you want to make sure that you don't just give it a light, a light tightness to it. You want to really kind of put your weight into it a little bit. The worst, thing, the worst thing would be is if this part is sitting here and rotating around oblong and comes around and hits our tool in a funny way and possibly could break things. The next thing I want to talk to you guys about is file safety. I don't know if you guys know a lot about files, but some files come with this nice handle on them while other ones are a little bit sharper. The reason we want to make sure we use the ones with the handles are if we're filing down a corner and it pushes back on us, we want to make sure that, that push, that's a soft edge pushing into our hand. Okay. Um, the next thing we want to make sure that we, we watch out for is positioning. We want to make sure that we are standing away from the chuck when we're filing. We do not want to be standing like this. This is bad. This will be rotating while we're making these files. so. It could cost, possibly come around, hit us in the elbow, or maybe even suck us in. So I'm going to go ahead and flip the lathe on right now. We're, we're going to make sure we're running at a low RPM. I'm going to run it at about 52 RPMs, but you could even drop it down to 35 or even go up to maybe 75 if, if you feel comfortable with it. But I would recommend starting at that 52 range. Okay, so when you're filing, I like to put my arm over here on the tool post. That way I can just have some little bit of strength. And I'm just going to start touching it and push forward. And you want to make sure you're doing long cuts. That way you get a nice consistent edge all the way around. Okay, next I want to talk to you guys about sandpaper safety. The main thing is you don't want to get the sandpaper wrapped around your fingers while you're sanding. This, what could happen is the sandpaper can get caught in the metal, could suck you in or possibly cut off the circulation to your fingers. Okay, we just want to make sure that we have a light grip, two fingers on each side. All right, I'm going to flip it on. We're going to run at about 650 or 650 RPMs for this. You can kind of play around with it, go a little bit higher, a little bit lower. Um, I notice it just cleans up a lot nicer the little bit faster you go, okay? So, again, light grip. And we're just going to work it back and forth. I do not want to see people getting their hands very close to that chuck, so make sure you have enough distance. These are like, you know, six inches to eight inches away from the spinning part. So the next thing I want to talk to you about is this flat spot on top of the headstock. This is not a place to put some major amount of tools. What could happen is we could create a pile of tools or extra bits and little pieces of metal and they could fall into the chuck over here and we want to avoid that as much as possible. So as a rule, we want to make sure we only have our calipers up here, our oil, maybe the plans that we're working on and our chuck key. Lastly, when you walk away from this lathe, I want to make sure that you flip the off switch right here and make sure that everything is stopped rotating and it is a completely safe environment before you walk away. Okay, now we're going to move on to talking about the mill. Some of the safety hazards we're going to be seeing are definitely rotational hazard in the headstock with all these different end mills. So we want to make sure we're watching out from that. Also, another serious rotational hazard is right here in the automatic feeds. If we're going to start off, we're going to be using these manually, but after we get going, we're going to turn them to automatic. The way the automatic works is you're just going to click over, and it can be moving pretty fast. If you put your hand in there right now, you could be consider considerably hurt by this. So you want to take it, make sure that you're kind of going slow with it, and walking, giving it some nice wide berth. 
Another, another dangerous thing that can happen with this table and the automatic feeds is this back here is a pinch point. If you're working over here and you have this thing automatically coming towards you, you could be pinched between the wall and this table. So definitely watch out for that. Next thing we're going to talk about is work holding on the mill. So you see your piece of work, we also have these things called parallels. The parallels are going to raise the piece of work above the jaws of the vise. This way, when you're cutting on it, you don't have an accidental contact with that vise because it's made of a lot harder steel than some of the other stuff we're going to be working with and could cause the bit to chunk and have some accidents. So one of the main things you want to make sure you remember is with the vise, you always pull out your handle and also with the knee down here, you want to make sure you also pull this handle out too. Okay, when working with any of either of these machines, we're going to talk a little bit about finesse. And one of the main places that we see people need a little bit more finesse is when they're using small drill bits. If you take this lever and you push really hard while you're drilling, you could possibly break that drill bit. So, and that could cause pieces to fly out at you, or it could also become lodged inside that hole and ruin your part, and we'll need to buy a new drill bit. So when you are drilling with these, you're gonna make sure that when you're pushing down, you're not adding too much pressure and you're kind of feeling that thing give back to you a little bit. Also, you will be watching for the color of the chips, the amount of chips that are coming out of it, and if there's smoke. 